Hello and welcome. This is class number 53 of the UPSC Mains Answer Writing Initiative, a place where we are trying to simplify UPSC Mains Answer Writing for you. In this class, every single evening at 7 pm, we have a session where we discuss a previous year question, discuss that topic in detail, try and write an answer, and also give your homework in the end so that you can also hone your answer writing skills. A lot of you have been constant viewers of this series, so thank you so much. You can invite your other friends as well who are preparing for the UPS examinations and who do not know where to begin for answer writing. Now, before we begin, as I do in every single class, I tell you that if you are really new to answer writing, if this is your first class ever and you have no idea how to begin answer writing, I would suggest you go to a description of this video. You will find the link of this playlist. The name of the playlist is UPSC Mains Answer Writing Initiative. Go to the first class of this entire playlist. In that class, you will see I have discussed how to structure an answer. What to write in the introduction, what to write in the main body, in conclusion, what not to write, all these things I have discussed in class number one. So go and see that first, so that in case you have any doubts about how to begin, you are in good hands. Now with that out of the way, let's see what question I'll be discussing today. Today we have taken up a question from GS2 paper of 2022. It's a question from IR. Do you think BIMSTEC is a parallel organization like the SARC? What are the similarities and dissimilarities between the two? How are Indian foreign policy objectives realized by forming this new organization? So there are three things basically these are that are being asked. First, is BIMSTEC parallel to SARC? Now BIMSTEC parallel to SARC means are these similar in a way in terms of the membership, in terms of the objective, in terms of the geography, in terms of the area that it actually covers. So first, second, you have to talk about similarities and dissimilarities between the two. And third, you have to talk about Indian foreign policy objectives, which are realized by forming of this organization such as the BIMSTIC. Now, we'll start with the introduction. Now, in the intro, you can do either of the two things. One, you can either write a definition of BIMSTIC. When I say definition of BIMSTEC, basically you can talk about what are the members, when was it formed, you can give a fact or a definition. So either you can go ahead with that. Rather, what we have done here is because it is a lot of things to write. There are three different parts that you have to answer. So rather than wasting our time and words in a separate intro, we have answered first part in the intro itself. The first part was that do you think it is a parallel organization? So again, either you write in the intro something about BIMSTEC, its formation, its members, or you straight away answer the first part in the intro itself. That is what we have done here. BIMSEC is a parallel organization to SARC in the sense that it includes members from similar geography, India and its neighboring country. So in the first, in the intro rather, we have already answered the first part. Now in the main body and conclusion, we have to address two other parts. The second part was similarities and dissimilarities between the two. So what we have done is we have made a table here. You can write in pointed form as well, depends entirely upon you. First, we have made a table about similarities, membership, how objectives are similar, how India is the largest member in both of the groups and has a central position, how decision making is through consensus rather than majority, how both the organizations have a charter now. This is how you can start or you can write about the similarities. Again, there is not just one way to write this. You could present in some other way also. But what we have done here is we have tried to make a table out of it to make it easier for the reader also to make it easier for the invigilator to understand. Similarly, we have made another table for dissimilarities. Like for SARC, there are only South Asian countries. In BIMSTEC, we also have Southeast Asian countries like Myanmar. Geopolitics, Pakistan, Afghanistan have a challenge. In BIMSTEC, India has made sure that these two countries do not exist, so we can bypass them. There is a free trade agreement for SARC, although it is not very successful. For BIMSTEC, there is no regional trade agreement as such. SARC has been dysfunctional since 2014 because of the Indo-Pak rivalry, mainly because of Pakistan still continuing to support terrorism, while BIMSTEC has its regional summits at a regular levels. There are contentious issues at SARC, but in BIMSTEC, there are no limitations as such because there are no rivalries as such in between the members. So again, this is how we are presenting the similarities and dissimilarities. It depends entirely upon you. You could present it in some other way as well. Whatever you think is best suited for the answer. Now, the third part was how is India trying to achieve its foreign policy objectives while formation of or with the formation of BIMSTEC? 
Now the third part we have answered in the conclusion so that we don't have to write a separate conclusion here. We have talked about how BIMSTEC is not really an alternative to Saab, but the success of BIMSTEC would help India in ensuring regional cooperation in South Asia. We also would have to factor in that resurgence of Saab would also be in India's interest because India would like to maintain diplomatic relationship on all sides and not just look towards the other countries and ignore Pakistan and Afghanistan. So what we have done is we have answered three parts, but we have not written a separate intro separate conclusion because in this case, what would happen if we do that, apart from writing three parts in the main body, we will exceed the word limit. We have to pay attention to that as well. So that when a lot of parts are being asked, we accommodate one of them in the intro, one of them in the conclusion so that we are still within the word limit. That is an important skill that you need to understand. And you can practice that skill in this particular answer. A lot of you have been requesting me to discuss something in ethics also. So now today I have a homework for you for ethics. It's a case study. Read it very carefully. It's a case study about you being a district collector of a coastal district and your district having a severe cyclone predicted to hit within a couple of days. Highest level of warning alert has been issued. It has about 5 lakh people and a significant portion of it lies in the low lying coastal areas and about labor to flooding. You have to evacuate all these people. The district hospital itself in a, is in a low lying area. It has 200 patients. This is a case study given to you. On basis of that, answer these three questions. This is your homework. If you want, I'll be happy to check this for you. You can just email this to me. I'll take a few days to evaluate and I'll send it back to you. Once again, requesting you to hit the subscribe button. If you are new here, do invite your other friends as well. If they would like to be a part of such initiatives, do join my telegram group as well. The link is in the description of the video where I share the PDF of all these lectures. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.